Hey everybody. Last spring, I set down a challenge uh, based on the 101 weirdest cosmic objects from this 2024 January issue of Astronomy Magazine. For this fall, the challenge is to image another one of these 101 weirdest cosmic objects, and this one is called Heinz Variable Nebula. It's also called Struve's Lost Nebula. Heinz Variable Nebula fluctuates in brightness in relation to the emissions of variable star T Tauri. This makes for some interesting history as to how the nebula was discovered. You see, in the mid-1800s, it was first viewed by John Russell Hind, but then it disappeared and wasn't seen again until 1868. Now, if you're lucky enough to find Hind's variable nebula and you're able to image it when it is visible, what you're going to get is a very unique perspective because as the star and nebula fluctuate, you're going to have the opportunity to image it as it will only exist ever once. Imaging Heinz Variable Nebula is going to be somewhat tricky because the best time to image it is in the middle to late fall. In the late fall, let's say November, the weather usually turns for us. Right now, the weather is good, but Taurus is low in the sky and doesn't rise until late in the night. Now, I'm excited to see what you guys are able to get. Myself, I'm going to take my attempt to image this nebula tonight. It is late September, and I'm out here at Andromeda Meadow, a secret location known only to the Hamilton Amateur Astronomy Club, where we're holding our annual star party. In order to image Heinz Variable Nebula, I brought my trusty Celestron Nexstar 6SE on a wedge with the ASI 2600 MC Pro camera. I'm also going to try to capture this nebula in a wider field of view to see if I can get some of the broader reflection nebula. And for that, I have brought my recently retrofit Frankenstein mount. Now, if you recall, my Frankenstein rig is a Nikkor 300 millimeter FED lens running with an ASI 294 MC Pro camera, along with a ZWO adapter that allows for a filter. That's all sitting on a Celestron Nexstar SLT mount on a wedge, so it's running in equatorial mode, and it has recently been upgraded with the Sfiboni power distribution hub and this little mini PC making the entire rig completely self-contained. My Celestron Nexstar 6SE also has a mini PC and a filter tray as well as a recently added rotator. I have also brought another Nexstar 6SE without a wedge for visual observation. My friend Andrew brought a Takahashi on an industrial sized mount and there was all sorts of other gear on display including a couple of really cool rigs from Keith from the Blue Water Astronomical Society. Brian from 10 Telescopes was by with one of his 3D printed telescopes. And Brett from Blue Water brought a 28 inch Dobsonian. It is uh, 2.37 in the morning. Uh, Taurus rose up over the horizon and then past the tree uh, that it was hiding behind by around 1.40ish. So I've got a little laptop here on the go. I'm doing a remote desktop from uh, both mounts. 
and I'm currently imaging Heinz variable nebula at 300 millimeters and at 1000 millimeters. I've decided to rename my mounts. So originally I was calling my 6SE wedgie because it was a telescope on a wedge. And the other mount, the rig I'm calling Frankenstein, so I've decided to name the two rigs after the two mini PCs that I have running them. Henceforth, the 6SE is going to be known as Nomad, and the smaller Frankenstein rig will be known as V'ger. Wow, what a great night. Heinz Variable Galaxy came up in the Hyades, or that little V in Taurus, around 2 o'clock in the morning, or at least that's when it cleared the tree that it had been hiding behind. At that point, it was already high up in the sky, uh, enough so that it cleared a lot of the atmosphere, which was a perfect time to start imaging. I started imaging plans on both rigs, and I had them running until around 6.30 in the morning, because I figured that's when the sun would brighten up the sky to the point where I wouldn't be able to image anymore. And I stayed up monitoring the rigs until around four o'clock in the morning and everything was running smoothly other than a couple of hiccups with uh, networking of trying to connect to both rigs with my other Windows PC through a little portable router. That worked perfectly well when I was at Starfest and it worked fine when I was testing from home the other day, but the new mini PC on my little V'ger rig was giving me a couple of hiccups. But once I got those sorted, everything ran smoothly. Now, while the imaging rigs were running, I spent a bit of time with my visual setup, as well as looking through visual scopes around uh, the star party. I got the chance to look through the Blue Water Astronomical Society's 28-inch uh, daub, and I got to see uh, Titan pass in front of Saturn. I also got to see that same oculation through a 12-inch daub, and through my own 6-inch 6SE. Although with that one there, it was so faint that um, I'm going to say I saw it because I know what I was looking for, uh, but it, it was very dim. We have a power generator going, so I'm recharging two of my batteries over there. I also have a 100-watt solar panel that I'm using to recharge a smaller ba battery that I'm also using at the same time to run uh, the, uh, the two mini PCs and the laptop so that I can do some of those spot checks to see what I got. During the day, a bunch of us went over to the Blue Water Astronomical Society's uh, Observatory, which is a very cool building. It is a roll-off observatory with a number of uh, piers where we got to look at the sun through a Lunt uh, solar scope which was very cool. There are a couple of uh, solar prominences and sunspots and a whole host of other uh, surface activity that were visible. I tried to capture that through my cell phone. Uh, I don't know if that worked out, but uh, visually it was really, really impressive. We have a group dinner tonight, so I'm going to be heading over to that soon. And after that, I'm going to train my telescopes on a few other targets. So I just finished packing up and just in time because the skies have started to open up. It was uh, spitting on and off while I was finishing up. And now as I started this video, it's starting to come down faster. So I'm going to have to make this quick. Last night was uh, a heck of a night. The skies were not as nice as the night before, but they were good. Um, my friend Andrew lent me a battery so that I could image a bit earlier than I had intended. Uh, I was imaging NGC 6604, which is an open cluster against the backdrop of 
uh, hydrogen nebulosity in uh, the galaxy core. Uh, and then I took a quick nap, slept for about an hour, got up around three o'clock in the morning in order to image uh, a reflection nebula called the Keyhole Nebula, which I saw pictures of online. I didn't do any research ahead of time, and the pictures made it look like they were in a large field of hydrogen uh, within the Orion Nebula. I thought that would have put it within Barnard's Loop. In fact, it is not. It is in a patch of completely dark space. I took a, uh, an image of it with a six inch telescope and I looked at it and it's this tiny little black spot right next to a star. Uh, and that's it. So if I had put this into the 300 millimeter, I wouldn't have been able to see anything other than a star field, a very uninteresting star field, other than the fact that the bottom part of the Orion Nebula was shining through at the top of the image. So uh, I did take uh, about uh, 30 minutes worth of data on the keyhole with the six, and then I was looking for something else to image, hopefully something that would have been harder to get from back home. And then I remembered I had been uh, struggling to get a good image of um, M78, the Friendly Ghost Nebula. So I slewed over to that. Uh, I had some trouble with my mounts in that uh, my 300 millimeter mount, uh, somehow the tripod got a little off center. So once I figured that out and recentered and repolar aligned, I lost a bit of time. And then my other battery died that I had been running off of. And I had to switch everything onto the same battery. So now I was on the little 300 Jackery running two scopes, hoping for at least a couple of hours worth of, worth of uh, imaging time. And I got it. Uh, so with everything aligned, I was shooting uh, M78 in wide field at 300 millimeters, and I just caught this, uh, uh, the, um, there's an open cluster, I'm going to have to look up which one it is, but there's an open cluster against the backdrop of Barnard's Loop, and just a little ways over from it is M78. So I, I tried to center the image or orient the image in such a way to capture both of those, uh, which I think I got. And then I was shooting M78 closer up with the 6, uh, with the battery issues uh, and uh, time running out because it was getting near morning, I didn't get that much time on it. And then the clouds moved in, so I got even less time. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, I, it might, might not be much better than what I got from home, uh, but, uh, well, there it is. So this has been an extremely fun star party. Uh, sorry, I'm tired. I'm sweaty. I, I was rushing to get the trailer done. I just wanted to Finish these last few words in situ, if you would. And uh, now I'm going to head on home. I got a three hour drive ahead of me. I got my uh, coffee. I got leftover Red Bull uh, or three more Red Bulls. That'll keep me awake for that trip since I slept very little last night. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm totally stoked. It's been a great experience. So uh, once again, uh, imaging Heinz Variable Nebula. If you haven't done it yet, that is the, uh, the task for this season. Get out there and image it before the weather comes in for the season. And get out there and have some fun. Clear skies, everybody.